Hey there, I'm so glad you're here. This training is going to be all about launching those centers to your students. We've talked about how to work centers into your schedule. We've talked about how to organize them. We've talked about flexible groupings. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. The first couple weeks of doing centers in your classroom is no quick and easy task. I will give you that little warning. <laughs> um, I always say you have to go fast to go slow or you have to walk before you run. That is definitely how setting up centers, or should I say running centers in your classroom is going to be. The foundation needs to be solid. So you're going to spend a couple of weeks digging into expectations, practicing these centers, so on and so forth. I'll explain here shortly, but just know that it does take a little bit of time, but it does pay off. If you put in the time at the beginning and build that foundation strong, the rest will fall into place nicely and your productivity all year will simply amaze you. So the first week of doing centers does look a little different than the rest of your year because you're really setting up those expectations. Spend the time doing this. I promise you it will pay off. The posters you see here are posters that I will give you for free. Um, they are the posters that I, pre I suggest using in the classroom for when it comes to your center time. These are our rules. We use these all year long. So things like using a quiet voice, using your time wisely, choosing just right activities. And when we say just right activities, that just means working at your independent level and the kids will know what that means. Not too hard, not too easy. Um, choosing a smart spot. I repeated that a lot. Choose a smart spot. If they're not in a smart spot, that means they are not able to work at their best. And kids know what that means because you're gonna spend the time going over that. And then I also have the rule of ask three before me. Because our groups are differentiated um, and, and our groups have varying levels of abilities inside of them, the students, no matter what level they're at, will have other students they can go to for help when it comes to their center activity. Now, what I will say is this, the first week is spent on expectations. That means that you may end up going into each of these rules at greater length. You might dig into these. Um, for example, use a quiet voice. What does that look like? What does that not look like? You're going to spend time modeling this and demonstrating it. You're going to demonstrate it. You're going to have students demonstrate it. And then you're also going to actually have some students to, um, that you're going to pick based off of them volunteering to demonstrate what it doesn't look like. Um, if you are familiar with the sisters with Daily Five, you will know that um, they go about this approach as well. Um, giving students the opportunity sh to show not only what your expectation looks like, but what it does not look like and get that chance to work out those wiggles. Um, so you're going to definitely spend some time on these five expectation posters. Like I said, they are free for you for watching this video. These next two are big ones. Number one, you're going to want to find a timer. And number two, you want to establish a signal. So let's go over to timers. Timers can look a lot of different ways. I like the timer that looks like this. Um, just set the time and when the, the red goes away, the kids know it's time to be done. Um, you can make, you can download free timers on YouTube. It can, you can just type it in, free timer or um, free, not even the word free, five minute timer, 10 minute timer, 20 minute timer. Um, those are found on YouTube and other places online as well. Um, you'll also want to establish a signal. And what I mean by that is that signal that kids are going to learn to listen for so that when they hear it, I always tell my students, you're going to freeze and you're going to put your hands on your head and find me. Find my eyes is what I say. So I like to use a wireless doorbell. You could use a bell, you could use, um, you could use a bell like this, you could use a bell like one of those little dinger bells on desks. Um, you could, your signal could be that you're going to turn off the lights. Um, your signal could be that you're going to clap. So determine what your signal is going to be and stay consistent with it so that kids know what to expect. But those two pieces are going to be a really important management piece for you. Once you've spent some time on expectations, modeling those exp expectations, what do they look like? What do they not look like? Then you're going to start with the basics. You're going to actually get your kids into activities, into their centers, but please make the wise decision to pick something super simple. 
The objective here is not to, um, you're in week two or maybe even week three. You're not trying to um, cover tons and tons of skills right off the bat. To start, you're just getting them into the practice of what does it look like? How should I act? What is my body doing? What are my teacher's expectations? And really practicing that stamina. So you might find that the first week of activities um, are all very, very simple skills from last year. That's okay. Also, another suggestion is I would pick something that you've already taught. The activity has already been taught before. Um, that's ideal. So maybe it's something that you taught uh, last week during your math time, um, a game that they enjoyed. Um, it, the, the, the goal of this is to like get the kids to feel what it feels like to be in those centers. Another good option for a starter activity is toothy. Why? It's because toothy is a skill that, or is a game that can be used over and over again. The, the directions stay the same. The skill is what changes out. And so there's not a lot of confusion on how to play it or what to do. The kids know that, and that makes for a really nice option for the first set of activities. Once the kids are in their first week of actually doing center activities, I like to do a stamina chart, again, similar to daily five, but for math centers. What this looks like is we have a chart that looks similar to the one you see here on the screen. And as a class, we set a goal. I will say to them, you know, normally your center time is going to take approximately 20 minutes. That is our goal. We want to get to that number, but to start, we're going to start with a shorter amount of time to practice because your teacher is really, really picky on what that time looks like. And remember, we're gonna look at those expectation posters again. This is what I'm looking for. And so what the idea of this is, the kids will, will review those expectations, we'll get them in their center spot, and then we take out an actual timer. And it's this big official thing where it's like, okay guys, we're gonna meet our goal. And are you ready? You were ready? Okay, and go. And they have to do their activity. And you are not meeting with anyone. You are simply walking around looking for kids to follow those expectations. And the very first time that you see a student not doing what the expectation is, you stop the timer, you ring your bell or whatever your, your uh, signal is, you bring them back to the rug. When we talk about what went well, and you give your kids a chance to share, I think this went well, I think I was in a smart spot, I think I did a great job of staying on task. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on what do you think we could do even better? And that's when um, the kids will actually be a lot more brutally honest with themselves than you would be um, in the sense of admitting to what kinds of things they may not have followed. Um, and then we're gonna celebrate. We're gonna do a big round of applause. Yay, we, we made it to five minutes. It might only be three minutes. It's really short to start because remember, you're being very, very picky. Um, and there's a point to that. Every day that you practice this, and you might get two or three rounds of practice in the first day. Um, you don't wanna overdo it, but you do want to give them a couple of opportunities to practice in one day and you're tracking it on that little stamina chart. And you celebrate, you celebrate with them, you celebrate when they beat their time and it becomes kind of a group effort. They wanna beat their time, they wanna beat yesterday's time. And eventually once you work up to that 20 minutes or however long your center rotation lasts for, that's your indicator that your kids are now ready to go into centers the way they're meant to be. That might take you a total of two weeks. That might take you a total of three weeks, but like I said earlier, I promise you it will be worth the time to do things right, build the foundation strong so that you can run or um, go, so you can, can do centers to their max abilities, um, but first building out that foundational layer. During your training weeks, and really truly you could do this all year, when you finish your center time, I like to give the kids a chance to do some reflection. Now, reflection could be very not formal, very informal by just giving a simple thumbs up or thumbs down or thumbs up or thumbs sideways on how they felt they did personally as it pertains to your expectations. And we literally do go through each one at the end. So we'll go through expectation number one. I'll show them the rule poster. 
did I choose a smart spot the entire time? And I always tell the kids, <clears throat> put your thumb by your heart and give yourself an honest rating. This is yes, I was in a smart spot the entire time or thumb sideways, I think I could do better. And again, it's amazing how kids are so honest with themselves, but using this as a, a practice that you do, it, a, continues to reiterate the importance of these expectations. It lets your students know you're serious about having these expectations in place. And honestly, all around, it's just, it's just a good practice to get into. Once your year gets going, you might find that at the end of your centers or maybe at the end of the week, you do like a real little reflection time um, little writing assessment that takes five minutes. This one is for free. Um, you can find the link below, but it's another opportunity to truly just do that self-reflection. And I think that it does pay off in the long run. I hope that this video is helpful to you. If you need more center ideas, we have a ton of them on luckylittlelearners.com. I encourage you to explore and take a look around. Also, I had mentioned that Toothy is a resource that to start your year is especially great um, for for your center activities. So here in just a second, I will play a video that shows you what is Toothy and how it works. And again, I hope that this was helpful to you and I will see you soon.